Welcome to Legal Connections, the President's Corner. I'm Kathy Times, FAMU's Director of Communications, and we have with us today our very own President, Dr. Larry Robinson, joining us. It's my pleasure to be back. Well, we want to talk about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. You know a lot about this area, of course, and tell us about um, what's happening here at FAMU with STEM and the significance of this. Right, so first of all, you know, it's one of our strategic priorities to increase the numbers of our students who are really participating in these areas of uh, strategic emphasis that are indicated by the Board of Governors. And so STEM is one of those categories. Uh, so both at the undergraduate and graduate level, we have to pay attention to the number of students who are graduating in these STEM disciplines. But beyond that, there are a number of tremendous opportunities and problems yet to be solved that won't be solved until you know, we unleash the talent resident in our students and faculty here at FAMU. So it's an opportunity for them to ask to prepare students for gainful employment and work on meaningful issues in our society. And you're very engaged and we're really proud of that in conversations globally about the future of STEM education in the United States, serving on a National Education Advisory Panel in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Tell us about the goals of this panel, which is composed of some really awesome individuals from nonprofits to business to, of course, higher education. Well, I'm honored to be a part of this uh, uh, advisory panel created by the U.S. Congress to develop you know, strategies around ensuring that the United States of America remains a leader in STEM education in the world. And so the whole pipeline from, from, from K, you know, to post-baccalaureate graduate and professional programs are all part of what we discuss in this panel to ensure that we're doing everything that we can, being as innovative as we can to, to promote the, the goals and objectives of the nation when it comes to STEM. What are the challenges, some of the things that you're seeing that this panel hopes to change? Well, the, the challenges are making sure that we continue to have enough and well-prepared people in the pipeline, okay? Because nations around the world, you know, some of whom are larger than the U.S. in terms of their overall population and have begun to realize the importance of STEM requires that we take a, a, a different approach to how we uh, address issues of STEM. We just can't assume that students will, you know, somehow be attracted to these areas. We have to be more deliberate in providing them incentives and letting them know uh, the types of opportunities available to them on the other side of this. And then we have to demystify science in general, making sure that every student realizes that they have the potential to be just as successful as the next student. We can't rely solely upon students from certain parts of our communities or certain parts of our society. And so this panel is, is very, very uh, sensitive to engaging a diverse cross-section of the American population to help solve these challenges. And during the past fiscal year, we really made some outstanding strides when it comes to the amount of funds received for research as well as the amount of money that we spent on research. Mm -hmm. Tell us about a grant that was awarded by the National Science Foundation to Dr. Marcia Allen Owens to study how women, specifically minorities, are going to be well served here at the university and beyond in the area of STEM. You know, first of all, I'm proud of what our faculty have done in terms of uh, the amount of money that they're bringing into the university, competing with the best institutions around this nation, bringing in significant dollars. We had a banner year in terms of uh, expenditures and research dollars that really helped to solidify our ascension to an R2 institution. It just so happened that one of those many grants that we were recipients of the last year or so includes the uh, grant that Dr. Marcia Allen Owens is the PI on. I happen to be the chair of her advisory committee. Uh, that committee had its first meeting here on campus last week. We had an organizing teleconference called earlier this summer. The whole idea there is, is that, going back to something I said earlier, making sure that, that women in particular uh, have an opportunity to be successful as faculty members in STEM, right? Because if we can have successful women faculty members who can become role models and so forth for other uh, men and women, I, I think we move a long way in addressing the underrepresentation issue in STEM. But we have to look internally to see where we can improve our own 
you know, climate around successful women uh, scientists in order to set an example for others to follow. What's your message to young people about STEM, especially coming to a university like FAMU and studying STEM? And so, you know, one of the things I say to parents and students alike is that we at FAMU believe that there isn't anything that you can't do with appropriate preparation. And so we say to parents, this journey to college starts early. If you want to be a scientist or, or engineer, it's not something you start thinking about in high school anymore. You have to go much further back and start getting students on the right path to a successful you know, STEM career, starting you know, formally at an undergraduate degree and beyond. However, we want every student to feel like they have the innate ability to do that, right? So we'll remo remove any you know, doubt that they have that they can be the, the next Nobel laureate in chemistry, physics, engineering, or whatever. We have to make sure that our students fundamentally believe that. But at the same time, we have to provide a roadmap for them in terms of how to get there. You, along with other administrators, senior administrators, spend a lot of time in Washington, That's also right. at the state capitol here in Tallahassee. Tell us about the intersection between uh, STEM and the nation's policies. So, you know, one of the things that you will see up close and personal is that, you know, scientists, you know, we are very good at coming up with strategies around how to, how to save or enhance the vitality of a, an ecosystem, right? We might come up with a strategy for improving air quality, water quality, and so forth. Ultimately, those scientific, that scientific knowledge has to be converted into some form of policy, some form of law. So the interface between science and policy is, is a very, very sensitive area where you take those things that we know and we call that intelligence, for example, environmental intelligence, and convert that into uh, policies and practices that allows us to take advantage of the good science. And so we make decisions that are science-based, they're not driven by politics, et cetera. But ultimately, you know, what we learn in science has to translate into things that change and, and improves people li people's lives. And that's where that interface between science and policy comes into play. And Dr. Robinson is the principal investigator of a grant that is funded by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This is year four. How's it going? It's going extremely well. You know, we have five additional partners, all minority serving institutions, three Hispanic serving institutions, three historically black colleges and universities. Our student numbers are extremely impressive. One of the great opportunities that we have here at FAMU in the Center for Coastal Marine Ecosystem is hosting the 10th biennial conference of the Educational Partnership Program for Minority Serving Institutions right here March the 29th through April the 1st of 2020 where we will be uh, receiving somewhere on the order of 400 plus students, faculty, scientists, and professionals here to, to talk about their work related to atmospheric sciences, marine sciences, coastal ecosystems, environmental technology, right here at the campus of FAMU. That's going to be an amazing event. We're really excited about that. And we really appreciate all that you do for the university, as well as the hands-on approach that you take to research. Well, thank you. You can find out about the conference at uh, ccme.famu.edu. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. We are looking forward to an outstanding conference. I know there is a lot of work going into planning this event. Now, for additional information, go to ccme.famu.edu. You can register for the conference as well as submit abstracts. Thank you for joining us.